Hey beauties, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be sharing all of my 2021 luxury beauty favorites. It's always so much fun to look back over the past year. Even though I spent most of 2021 on a low buy, or an attempted low buy, I purchased a lot more than I realized. Of course, not everything is going to be considered a favorite, but I do have a lot here to talk about, so I'm going to create a separate video for my Chanel beauty favorites. I'm also going to create a separate video for my 2021 luxury beauty fails and regrets. But what makes this video so special is not only do we have a great giveaway, but this is a collaboration with Cindy from A Heated Mess. If you're not already familiar with Cindy's channel, you are missing out. She is a luxury lover, just like all of us. She has great unboxings, shopping vlogs. She has such an incredible personality. She's so funny. Her videos are always so entertaining. I feel like I'm vicariously shopping through her videos. I always like to see what she picks up and hear her thoughts on it. She is the queen of holiday advent calendar unboxings here on YouTube. So if you love advent calendars, she should be your number one resource. And Cindy has been a longtime YouTube friend of mine. We haven't had a chance to meet in person, but we've connected through social media and I just really love following along and following her journey. I think you will love her content if you really appreciate luxury items. So Cindy is going to be sharing her best and worst luxury purchases of 2021, which I personally cannot wait to watch because I feel like I have a pretty good idea of all of her luxury purchases this year. So I'll be curious to see what she considers to be her best purchases and her worst purchases. I'm especially curious about the worst purchases. Those are always fun to watch because it's a good buyer beware money saver. So head over to her channel. Of course, her video, her channel will be linked down below in the description box. Let her know I sent you and say hello. And make sure you watch until the very end of today's video for information on how to enter our incredible giveaway. You're not going to want to miss it. As I mentioned, I have a lot of products here to talk about. For my 2020 favorites, I kind of went through my entire makeup collection and just pulled out my favorite things, the pieces that I used the most. But this time around, I decided to focus on the products that were launched in 2021. So 2020 was the year of bronzer. It felt like every brand came out with a new bronzer. Well, 2021 was the year of blush. Two of the biggest blush launches this year, Hermes, Pat McGrath Labs. First, I wanna talk about the Hermes. At $77 each, I know this will be a controversial favorite. Some people really loved them, other people were disappointed by the launch. I really like these blushes. I think the compact is very beautiful. The white and gold with the Hermes crest on the front and then the brushed gold on the back. They're not as weighted and as heavy as I would have expected, but a little bit surprising, still not disappointed because I just really love the formula. Now, as pretty as they are to look at, they did fumble the refillable aspect. The compacts are meant to be refilled. On the back, there's a little hole where you stick your pin and this pan should pop right out easily. But unfortunately, turns out they glued the original pan down in the compact. So some people were struggling to get this pan out and you might accidentally damage the compact that you're supposed to hold onto and refill. But if I'm basing my review solely on the formula, I think they are so pretty. The powder is very fine. It's very silky. It's not silky in a creamy way, but it's just so soft and silky. The blushes from Pat McGrath Labs are also incredibly stunning. I think I ended up with three shades. I purchased two and then one shade was sent to me to review. This one right here is Nymphette. Really creamy formula. I think this is actually a little bit more creamy than the Hermes. One thing I prefer about the Hermes is that they're matte, and I don't know why I've just recently started leaning towards more matte blushes. I guess because I would rather control my highlight and only highlight in specific areas. I don't necessarily want shimmer in my blush. I still think they're incredibly flattering, but if you prefer a matte blush, this might not be the range for you. I do also think the shades are beautiful. And she came out with a lot of deeper shades, more vibrant shades. I think the selection is really incredible. And the pan size, you get a ton of blush for the price. I, it's gonna take me a long time. I probably don't need to purchase blush ever again. And then Laura Mercier launched new blushes. I don't think this blush formula was new this year, but she came out with new shades. I think guava, watermelon, this is passion fruit, or some of the newer shades. Strawberry and peach. I think it's strawberry. Strawberry and peach are my two favorites, but I love this entire range. These are also matte blushes, and I think they're pretty comparable to the Hermes. If you're looking for something with that really nice consistency, very silky but matte, a more affordable option would be the Laura Mercier. Again, 
stunning colors. I really like the way these apply to the cheek. They blend effortlessly. Just a really nice, natural, soft blush. Both of these Shantikai blushes are new favorites. This one launched with the Flower Power Collection, which I love. This packaging is so cute and happy. This is the Flower Power Cheek Shade. It, this has a little luminosity to it, but it is such a soft sheen versus the Pat McGrath Labs where I think you can see it more on the skin. This just kind of melts into the complexion and you just look like your cheek is glowing somehow. Magic, fairy dust. It's just very pretty. It's a very light pink. So this probably won't show up on everyone, unfortunately, but they did a gorgeous job with this. This is so silky, it almost feels like cream to the touch. And the same is true with this one. This came out with the Pearl Collection for the holidays, Akoya. This is the Rouge Pearl. I love this compact. This is just so glam. A collector's piece, definitely. This one looks a lot brighter in the pan, but it actually goes on the cheek kind of closer to this. It's not quite so vibrant and Barbie pink. And I picked up two blush palettes this year that I really like. The first one is from Christian Louboutin. I think this was probably the most surprising launch. I know this was controversial as well because of the price. Now this is truly a refillable compact and it feels heavy. This is like a paperweight. And actually if you take the product out, you have to buy them separately. You can also insert the eyeshadow palette replacement, but if you take this out, it's deep enough. It's not that deep, but it's deep enough that if you wanted to, you could keep jewelry, necklace, trinkets. You could probably use it as a card case if you really wanted to. So I really like this. Compact is beautiful. The red on red is also nice, but I think the black is my favorite because you have the red bottom with Louboutin. The reason I love this palette is the product inside. You get two blushes and a highlighter. This blush is kind of matte. It's more of maybe a satin. And then this peachier shade right here has a little bit more of a sheen to it. The highlighter is really beautiful. I was surprised, honestly. I was hoping I would really like it, but I was surprised by how beautiful it was. And how much I loved it because the texture is really interesting. They go on like a powder, but it's so creamy. It's almost gummy to the touch. I accidentally scratched this blush with my fingernail. I went to fix it and you can just press the powder back down and it just kind of squishes back together. So really interesting formula. I like the face palette more than I like the eyeshadow palette. I still really liked the eyeshadows, but if I had to go back and only choose one, I would definitely go with this face palette. And then I also have the Beach Bomb palette from By Terry. I love this face palette. I think this might be my favorite palette to collect. This is only the second one I've purchased. I don't know if this is the second one they've ever made, but I love everything about these powders. You get two blushes, a bronzer, and a highlight. Really convenient. I love the size of this compact. It's nice and slim. It's not too huge. The packaging is still gorgeous. And then the powders inside are really pretty. The Beach Balm is my favorite. I think I like this one more than Sunny Flash just simply because the shades. This one has a little warmth. This one is a little bit more cooler tone. So even though there are only two, you do have some variety. And I also think I prefer the bronzer shade this year. The powders do have a little rose scent. If you have the CC Serum, it has that same very faint rose smell to it. So if you hate that, you're not going to like this palette. But if you don't mind the scent of a little rose and it's light, it dissipates once it's on your skin, highly recommend. I wanna say these palettes are maybe $50 and they usually have some sort of discount or promotion. So you might be able to pick it up for less than that. I think for the amount of product you get, the beauty of the packaging and the price, this is definitely the best face palette. We're almost done with blush. I also picked up two cream blushes this year. These are my two favorites. The Rare Beauty Blush and the Hourglass Blush Stick. Both are amazing. This is Nearly Neutral and this one is Sacred. This is the Vanish Blush, blush Stick. It goes on so pigmented. It's almost like one of their lipsticks. You only need a teeny tiny bit. It does blend really easily, but I almost think 
you should probably blend this out with a brush depending on how minimal you're going with your makeup. It's the perfect everyday pink. I wanna say I purchased this during the spring Sephora savings event, highly recommend it. And then this Rare Beauty blush, the Nearly Neutral, it's incredible. I keep this, well, I keep both of these in the top drawer, but usually if I'm running out the door, if I'm doing my very bare minimal makeup routine just to leave the house, this is what I throw on. It's so pretty. This is not quite as thick, creamy, and pigmented as the Hourglass, but it still gives you plenty of color payoff. It's just a little bit balmier. It's a bit more emollient, so it makes it easier to blend on the skin, but I love this formula. I have two favorite face palettes. The first one is from Hourglass. This is their holiday palette. It is the Ambient Lighting Edit Universe such a pretty palette. This is only my third year picking this up. I think this is my favorite out of all three. I do really like this marble packaging. It's pretty. I like how they added a touch of gold in there. I just find the shades inside to be the most flattering on my skin tone versus the previous two. I really like this warm blush up here. I've been using that a lot lately. I really like the blush. This is kind of a plummy blush. This could be your day, evening, spring, summer, fall, winter, if you choose. I also really like the bronzer. The bronzer is the deal breaker for me because one of the bronzers is way too red. And I just, I would use it in a pinch if I used the palette for travel, but I have so many bronzers that are flattering on my skin tone. If it's not that flattering, I'll probably just pick up a different palette. That's the problem with palettes like this is you really have to love every single shade Otherwise, you're not going to grab it as often as you should for the for the price. This Charlotte Tilbury Nudegasm face palette really surprised me. When I saw this collection launch, I wasn't really that interested. Because I'm on my low buy, I wasn't that interested. If it had come out the year before, I probably would have purchased. But thankfully, the wonderful team over at Charlotte Tilbury sent this over to me complimentary. And I fell in love with this palette. I did not realize how amazing it was. This kind of coppery, peachy highlight shade right here is a really beautiful blush topper or blush. You have two really pretty bronzer contour shades down here, and then I also really like the champagne. This has been probably the best travel palette, besides the Hourglass, that I've purchased this year, but also just in my collection. I used this on a handful of trips this year, and it was so easy. You can use this on eyes and face, so it is incredibly versatile and so easy to pack in a bag. Will I use it on a daily basis? Probably not. Not unless I go through more of my collection. Then maybe I would put this in the top drawer, but for travel, for a weekend trip, for anybody who really likes just minimal makeup, you'd rather have kind of an all-in-one situation, this is really handy. I'm gonna keep it going with the face products. I also picked up this Dior Forever Natural Bronze Bronzer in the shade 05 Warm Bronze, which is such a pretty matte bronzer. It truly is very natural. Of course, I was really interested by this packaging. It's so pretty. And I have gotten it a bit dirty. The actual cream compact doesn't get dirty, or at least you can wipe it down. The problem is the stitching. This just absorbs and soaks up any product that might accidentally get on there. So it doesn't look quite as pretty and pristine as it was when I first picked it up. It's just makeup. It's fine. But this is a refillable compact. So it has the little hole in the back and I should be able to pop out this bronzer when I'm done and hopefully replace it with a refill. I think this is one of those products that the refill has not been spotted yet. Correct me if I'm wrong. But so many brands are coming out with, a lot of luxury brands are coming out with refillable packaging. Even though they haven't created the refill, I think they're maybe just trying to get a step ahead of themselves and create the packaging and then the refills will come later. Hands down, my favorite powder launch of 2021 is the Flower Power from Shantikai. I realize this is not technically a new launch this year because they've had the blur powder for a while now, but it's the first time I've tried the powder and I do really like this Flower Power packaging. So this is the Flower Power Perfect Blur Finishing Powder in the shade Light Medium. I think this was originally limited edition with the 
hummingbird collection maybe last spring and then they brought it back and they made it an inline product because so many people became obsessed with this powder and I get it it's kind of the perfect setting powder it's not too matte it doesn't have any sheen to it doesn't give you any coverage so this is more of a finishing powder maybe for somebody who doesn't like glow it's so light but it doesn't add any cakiness or any layers to your foundation it goes on and it kind of blurs everything and you can't see it it may seem kind of odd to love a product that appears to do nothing on the skin but i think in this case that's exactly what you want it to do you don't want to be able to detect powder on your face after you apply it just sort of melts into the skin it is so finely milled Definitely have to be careful with your brush because if you pick up oil from your face, from your skin, and then you dip into this, you can develop a little bit of a harder crust and it feels like it might get difficult to pick up the powder in the future, similar to the Chanel Le Beige powders. So you just have to be careful, but I've really enjoyed this powder. I think it looks beautiful on the skin. Moving on now to highlighters, I only have two and they were both from the holidays. This first one is the Chantecaille. This is the Pearl Lumiere. I've talked about this so much by now, but I just think it is stunning. Such a pretty highlighter. I love this pearl packaging. It's gorgeous. The highlighter itself has kind of a pinky pearl shift. It almost looks iridescent on the skin. Of course, you can purchase highlighters that give up that same effect for a lot less. I think in this case, you have the design. It comes in the really pretty light pink satin pouch and of course the pearl compact. It's just one of those really special limited edition pieces from Chantecaille. But if you're looking for a similar highlighter shade, I would say the Opal highlighter from Chanel is pretty close. And I think Dior has something similar. You can certainly find something to give you that same effect, but if you're looking for one of those really special limited edition pieces, that's this. And then I picked up the Givenchy Holiday Highlighter from the Sephora Holiday Savings event, and it's gorgeous. This will probably last me an entire lifetime. This is the shade 10 Organza Ore, and it does have this really pretty mirrored top, which you could use to apply. It has this sponge inside, which seems kind of funny. Nobody puts on highlighter with a sponge, not typically, but I think in this case, the sponge is what makes the highlighter because if you just dust it on your cheek, it might be a little bit too much. It's a, a very shimmery highlighter. But if you just kind of stamp it, like I'm just gonna kinda, and you just kinda press it into your foundation using the little mini sponge, then it looks far, I mean, this doesn't look natural, but it looks far more natural if you use the sponge versus a brush. I'm really glad I tried that out the first time I used this highlighter because I've heard mixed reviews and I think that's really the difference maker is that you kind of have to press it into the skin just so it's not quite so shimmery, just kind of sitting right on top of the makeup. Kind of want to work it in there and then it's beautiful. And then the last powder complexion product I have to mention is from Guerlain. It's the Pink Pearl Meteorites. I picked up all three, I think, of the limited meteorites they launched this year. These were so hard to come by. As soon as they were posted online, they kept selling out. Sorry, it's really hard to show them without them falling all over, all over the place. I love the meteorites. It's just a beautiful finishing powder. It's one of those quintessential luxury beauty products. And I only recently started collecting them. I think the pearl has got to be my favorite. I feel very lucky that I was able to get my hands on this. I don't remember where I ordered this from. I might have ordered these from Harrods. And then I also ended up getting the Pearl Glow, which also launched with their spring collection. These were even harder to get a hold of. In fact, they weren't available in the US for a really long time. I think I ended up ordering these from Nordstrom though. Mm, I love that scent. And then I did pick up the Holiday Pearls. These are the gold, yes, the gold pearls from the Holiday Collection. Very pretty. And all you have to do is swirl your brush inside, tap, tap, tap. Gives a nice soft focus, kind of airy glow to the skin. It's like finishing your makeup with fairy dust. So this gives you a little hint of sheen and that's it. I wouldn't set my makeup with this. Like I said, I like a more matte under eye, but for the T-zone, the cheeks, the chin, other places on the face, and also neck chest decollete, if you're exposing your shoulders, 
take a little kabuki brush and dust on the meteorites and it makes your skin look like it's naturally flawless and glowing. I have two favorite foundations to talk about. The first is Guerlain, so that's kind of a perfect transition. This is the L'Essential High Perfection 24 Hour Wear Foundation. So the L'Essential Foundation, I believe is available at Sephora. This, I think you can only pick it up at Selfridges. I don't know if it is a Selfridges exclusive or if it's just exclusive to England or the UK. If you know, please let us know down below. It's so unfortunate that this isn't more widely available. Hopefully it will be in the future. If you like a matte finish, you will love this. It does have skincare. 24 hour wear, I have no clue. I have not tested it on my face for 24 hours, but it looks very natural. It doesn't look heavy, medium coverage, and it is long wearing and it's matte, but it's not drying. I just love this foundation. One of my new favorites. And then I also really like the Valentino foundation. I know it's kind of crazy. I didn't have the best luck with Valentino Beauty, but I liked the foundation. And what's missing is the Gucci foundation. Partly my fault because I ordered the wrong shade online. It was way too dark and gold, just wrong all the way around. The Very Valentino, I think this one wasn't a perfect shade match either, but I can just tell this is such a better formula. I think they did a great job with this foundation. So the Gucci, I like. Would I call it a 2021 favorite? No, but the Very Valentino, which is now available at Sephora, I believe, highly recommend this and it does have SPF 26. It's very thin, so it doesn't look heavy on the skin at all. I was really impressed by this. I also really liked the Valentino V Lighter. This is the dual use liquid light face, base, and top coat. I haven't used it as a top coat, but I have used it as a primer and it's a very beautiful illuminating primer. It feels really thin, doesn't feel sticky, tacky, kind of fills in all of the fine lines and pores. It's more of a gel texture, gel consistency. I have the shade Rosa. It's this really pretty light pearly pink looks really beautiful you could mix this into your foundation as well but it looks really nice underneath and it feels really nice and it has skincare ingredients as well i don't remember what they are off the top of my head but when i reviewed all of these products i looked them up on valentino and i think that's a really nice touch i've mentioned this before but i like to go in with something that has skincare underneath my foundation so i don't feel like i'm just slapping foundation right on top of my skin I think something like this looks really beautiful. And then the only other piece I tried from Valentino that I really liked is the glitter. This Dream Dust. I went with shade 02. It's the gold glitter. So pretty. It's suspended in a gel, so it kind of has the glitter glue built into the product, which is convenient, but it's very sparkly. This is perfect for the holidays. I guess I just wanted to try it. I'm glad I did pick this up. I haven't really gotten a lot of use out of it. Not that I thought I would, but I think for holiday parties, New Year's Eve makeup, a birthday, special occasion, something like that where you're getting a little bit more glam than you normally would, I think you could definitely find some really nice uses for this glitter. It looks really pretty just on top of the lid. You might even be able to use maybe an eyeliner brush and create a glitter, glitter eyeliner with it. That would be really pretty. Before I mention my favorite eyeshadow palettes of the year, I have a couple miscellaneous eye products, including this NARS Climax Liquid Eyeliner in Explicit Black. I really like this liquid eyeliner pen. It is very precise. It doesn't bleed at all. It is the blackest black, long lasting, just zero complaints really happy with this. I think they launched it maybe a couple months ago, pretty recently. And then the Anastasia Brow Freeze, the brow styling wax. You know, I've used this almost every time I've done my makeup. I switch off between this and the 24 hour brow setter from Benefit. Both of them are amazing. This one has a little bit more pliability and I'm almost done with this. I picked up a backup because I just never want to be without it. I'm pretty close to finishing but it just holds the hairs in place and it really separates them, gives them more of a microbladed, fluffy brow look, which I really like. So I think this product is essential if you're trying to create a more natural, fluffy brow. And then I also really like this Kosas 10 second eyeshadow. I know I've talked about this a few times. I don't know if this launched this year, it was sent to me by the brand this year, and I keep it in the top drawer. And this along with the Rare Beauty Cream Blush, 
this is kind of my running out the door makeup routine. I just think it is so easy to use. It looks very natural. Liquid shadows, cream shadows, I think can sometimes be a bit intimidating and you think, oh, it's gonna take more time in the morning and I'm just gonna throw some powder on the lid. This is the fastest eyeshadow application ever. You can just dab with your fingers a little bit on the lid. It instantly dries. It's so thin. I don't know how they did it, but it's just perfect. And I really like this shade. It's the perfect everyday copper. It's the shade Globe. I have five favorite eyeshadow palette purchases of 2021 besides all of my Chanel eyeshadow palettes, which we will get to. But the first is the small palette. This is from Pat McGrath Labs, the Venus and Fleur Luxe Quad Voyeuristic Vixen. Beautiful. It is the perfect condensed version of Utopian Dream. I've gotten so much use out of this eyeshadow palette, and that is my biggest complaint about purchasing more palettes. I love seeing all of the new colors and new palettes come out, but I just really struggle to justify the purchase because I have so many palettes already and I hate to see palettes that I purchase sit in the drawer and not get pulled out and not get used. That was not the case here. It was the case with the other palette. I don't remember the name, but I did pick up another quad from Pat McGrath Labs this year and I did not touch it at all. So this is one that I think is super user friendly and I think these are really wearable colors. You can pop into this gold and pink shimmer up here if you want a little extra sparkle, but these three eyeshadows, this is kind of all you need to create the perfect glam look. Could also be an everyday palette if you just kind of hop in these two right here. So it can be whatever you want it to be. It's versatile, it's more compact than her larger mothership palettes and her quality is insane. I love the Pat McGrath Labs formulas. I also really like, well, I might as well talk about the larger Pat McGrath Labs, Utopian Dream. So I think that quad looks very similar to these four shades right here. I picked that up first, and in hindsight, I probably would have skipped it had I known because I feel like I can achieve the same looks using these four shadows, at least for travel, it's a lot easier to pull out of the drawer, so it's fine that I purchased it. But this palette is probably my favorite Mothership palette. I just think these colors are so fun, and it's the perfect mix of warm and cool, neutral and pops of color, more jewel tones. So you have a little bit of everything. I think as long as you are happy with these shades right here, you will love the palette. This is what makes her Mothership palette so special. Those really pretty duochrome and triochrome shimmery glittery shades. So much fun to play around with and another palette that I have gotten decent use out of. I'm not gonna lie and say I've gotten a lot of use out of it because that is not true. But I have used it enough and the more looks I create with it, the more I think I will continue to use it. The palette I've gotten the most use out of this year is this Smoky Eyes Are Forever palette from Charlotte Tilbury. I know, I am obsessed with these palettes from Charlotte. $75 for 12 eyeshadows, I think it's the best deal, versus $54 for the quad. I know I always make that point, but it's so true. I mean, I never touch my Charlotte Tilbury quads anymore, and it's not because I don't like them or they're not good, they're great. But once you get this, or the Pillow Talk palette, or one of her larger palettes, it just feels like there's no reason to have them. The quality is amazing. I love these shimmers. And this is, I think, a very wearable palette. It's basically neutral with a, a hint of green. And it's a khaki green, so it's very wearable. I love this. I now use this just about every single day. Last year, I used the Pillow Talk every day. Using that palette every single day, just about. I only hit pan on maybe two shadows inside, that haunts me. That runs in my brain all the time and reminds me constantly to stop shopping for new palettes. But I did also pick up these, the Natasha Denona Retro Palette. I love this color story. It looks very flattering on the eye. And I don't have a huge Natasha Denona collection, but this instantly became one of my favorites. Glam and this, I think, are the prettiest. And the last eyeshadow palette is my controversial pick. This is the Gucci palette. I think this will probably make a lot of people's worst beauty of 2021 list, but I don't know if they're just 
not giving it the proper love or what because I like these eyeshadows. You get no fallout whenever you use them. I just don't think they're bad. This is the only shade right here, the shimmery shade. I struggled with that one, but everything else works really nicely. I've created looks that I love using this palette and it's become my go-to palette to grab when I'm running out the door and I've done my foundation first and maybe I wasted time and suddenly I don't have a lot of time to do my eyes. I grab this because I know I don't have to worry about the fallout. So the floral design, it feels really good. It feels nice and heavy and weighted. I know some people have said they hate the packaging. They think it looks really cheap. Nothing about this looks cheap in person. When you're holding this in your hand, it's impressive. The very last two items I have here to mention are lipsticks and I have been on a very, 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 very low buy for all of 2021. So I did not purchase a lot of new lipsticks this year by design and that will probably roll over into 2022. The first one is this Lip Power from Armani. Now these were sent to me, so I did not purchase these. I'm glad they were sent to me though because they're really good and I love this formula. So the lipstick I have on right now is 502 but I, I use them all. Uh, 200 is another really good one. 400 is kind of that perfect red, but I just really like how slim they are. I love how pigmented they are, but they're very hydrating. It goes on so smooth and creamy, almost like a lip butter, but very pigmented. And then I also picked up two lipsticks from Guerlain. I know I purchased some Chanel lipsticks as well. I broke the no buy for those. We'll talk about those again in my separate Chanel video. So here I have these beautiful Rouge G cases. This was their spring collection. Everything they came out with for spring was gorgeous. So we have the plain pearl and then the slightly pinky pearl. And then the lipsticks, this is the nude. They have a little shimmer to them and it just looks so pretty on the lips. So this is the nude shimmer lipstick. Of course the cases open up and you have the little mirror inside. I think this is gorgeous. All of the cases are refillable. These pearl compacts or the pearl cases were limited edition. You might still be able to get your hands on them. And then this one is the pink pearl. So it's just kind of a beautiful light pink that has a slight sheen to it. Both of the shades of lipstick are gorgeous, but I love these cases. I could not resist. I think this was one of my very first purchases of the year too, right after I instituted the no buy or low buy. And that completes my list of 2021 favorites. So now let's talk about the giveaway. One lucky subscriber is going to win one of the Chanel holiday lip gloss trios. Now this is not the lip gloss trio. This is my beauty boost set, but I wanted to use this as a fill in because I have to pick up the lip gloss trios tomorrow at the boutique. So I don't have it in hand just yet, but I did already pre-order them. So I know they will be here. All you have to do to enter is make sure you are subscribed to both my channel and Cindy at A Heated Mess. Both of them will be linked down below. The giveaway will remain open for one week and then the winner will be chosen randomly. And all of the 12 days of giveaways are open internationally. So good luck to everybody who enters. And that completes today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Leave me your comments, questions down below. As always, I will be linking everything mentioned. Everything on my face will be down below in the description box for your convenience. And for more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell.